hello and a welcome to another very special episode of the Sales Ops Demystified podcast. Today we're joined by Brent Silberman of Narrative Science. Brent, welcome to the show. Yeah, Tom, thanks for having me. I'm excited. Now, from my knowledge of Brent, I think this is going to be an analytical discussion. Um, it seems like Brent has moved through his career, kind of like doing a few different things, but kind of focused on analytics and now is responsible for analytics and revenue operations and narrative science. So let's dig more into this. Brent, how did you get into the operations side? I, I, I know you have the analytics background, but how did that thing kind of happen? Yeah, so um, it's, a, it's a great question. I mean, if you think about it right, when I was in college, I was studying analytics. There wasn't like a sales operations major um, or anything like that. So it's just like when I first got to narrative science, what brought me there really was like this, you know, emboldened passion for data storytelling. So I started off very narrow, um, looking at like product usage data. And then like as we grew, as we scaled, that became, you know, looking at more data. Um, and then that was like kind of how I got into like Salesforce reporting. And then, you know, I kind of decided, you know, I wanted to go a little bit more upstream on like, how do I format the data, the processes a little bit better um, so that the reporting and analytics itself are yielding more positive results. And that led you into operations. Yep, exactly. So I, you know, I was on finance uh, before I moved directly into like a sales operations role. And so basically I, you know, I was like, you know what, like if I do more inside of Salesforce adminning, um, then I think I can provide better results. Um, I think we can, you know, track things better and then I can create better reports and stuff like that. Cool. So I'm just kind of getting straight in my head, right? So in an analytics role, you're going to be looking mm-hmm. at all the data and making decisions. Yep. And then in an ops role, are you then taking those decisions and then actually doing stuff? If, if that yeah, right? exactly. It's like this. It's like this weird circle, right? That's like, where does it really start? Is it like, oh, I'm analyzing this now, and I can change this process here, or if I change this process here, I'll be able to analyze it this way as well. So I saw it as kind of like hand in hand, right? I feel like without operations, you know, you want we need data to make those insights. So I felt like it was an interesting pairing. Got it. So would you say it's accurate? Uh, an accurate statement is that a sales operations or revenue operations resource needs to be very proficient at analytics. I think it's. Um, I think you're going to see that's a, g- a growing trend. It's good to you know understand data. I mean, if we think about Salesforce and Marketo and those kind of tools, effectually they are sort of like relational databases, and you know very abstractly, right? It's you know how do I format data to you know analyze it, but it is also the process aspect. So having both sides really does help. Got it. Cool. Um, so now zooming in onto today, what is the current sales mm-hmm. tech stack at Narrative Science? Yeah. So um, we use, you know, the run of the mill. I mentioned uh, Salesforce and Marketo, obviously, those are the big ones. We use Outreach for sequencing, uh, LinkedIn Sales Nav, Google Apps, um, Lead IQ, which is, you know, how do I, you know, get names from LinkedIn, things like that. And then uh, shameless plug alert. So um, we use our own internal product that we built. Um, it's called Lexio. Um, so we take data from Salesforce and turn it into stories. Um, and I'm, I'll spare you the the pitch, but I'll tell you kind of how I use it. Um, and, you know, it's really easy for me to log onto my phone because it's like a little newsfeed report that tells me, you know, stage transitions by AEs, close dates moving back, deal sizes changing, all like while I'm on the train going to work. So it kind of preps my day. It's really just, you know, it is a part of like very integrated part of our sales tech stack from a reporting aspect. Cool. So Lexio is pulling out data from Salesforce and presenting it mm-hmm. to yep. you guys. To me, to yeah, to our company. Our whole company uses it really. So yeah, it takes the data from Salesforce, your opportunities, accounts, uh, leads, things like that, and analyzes it and automatically generates a report. Um, it also creates these what's called insights that you can kind of scroll through and look into. Cool. Um, yep. Okay. So can we talk about time when you've been mm-hmm. an art of science where you've been working with the reps um, and you've done something based on these insights to improve mm-hmm. their close rates or. Yeah, uh, totally. So um, one of the largest things that I, you know, kind of look for is, you know, health of opportunities. Um, you know, I, I see, you know, engagement, things like that, but one of our things was really around um, stage duration. So, um, before I kind of move into the ops role, we kind of didn't have any, you know, SLAs about how long ops should stay in stages. 
And so what I actually found is like any op that stayed in stage three for X amount of days had little to 0% chance of closing. So we kind of started to enforce um, those stage duration SLAs, um, which then, you know, A, it shortened our pipeline and, and saved them time from wasting on these bad opportunities. So if you saw an opportunity within this stage in the pipeline for too long, what would mm-hmm. happen? Like, Yeah, so there was kind of like three steps there. The first step is the alert to me and the AE being like, hey, this is a little bit, this is past your stage duration, you know, please let us know, you know, why this is, why this is taking a little bit longer than usual. Um, a few days later, it's like another email alert where it's like, hey, this is still, this hasn't moved yet. Um, so it's kind of like a cascading alerting system there. Um, and then, you know, 30 days out past, it's like, you you should probably close this out. This is a very low chance of closing. Got it. So automated alerts based on stage times. Um, and that's, mm-hmm. it's basically prodding the salespeople to push stuff through and not waste time. Yeah, exactly. Like we want to, you know, make sure they're working on the right stuff, uh, working on it and not spending time on things that, you know, the data is saying this is not like a highly probable, highly probable close. Yeah. Got it. Um, just quickly, how many sales reps are you managing and how many people in the ops team? Yeah. So the ops team is um, just me and one other person who does a little bit of marketing ops stuff. And then the sales team is about five reps. Um, so we have a commercial team. So they're focused on selling to the mid-market and then an enterprise team that sells into large organizations. Yeah. Got it. And is that, is that like five AEs and then you have SDRs or it's just the five in total? Yeah. We have a, we have a couple SDRs as well. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Okay, nice. Um, I want to talk about onboarding. Have you, mm-hmm. out of these seven people, have, have there any, any been onboarded recently? And what did you do in that process that w- w- you thought was effective? Yeah, so um, the one thing with the AEs is they're all very, they're longer tenured than I. Um, so they, they've been at the company maybe seven, eight years. Um, I'm, I've been at the company for four years. So they're long form, you know, big um, enterprise AEs. But, you know, with the SDRs, we do have, we had a new one come in. And so my role really in it was um, more so around how do I get them the right licenses and permissions um, to, you know, do their job. So get them, getting them set up with outreach, making sure they know how to use outreach, things like that versus, you know, here's how we sell. We kind of leave that up to, you know, the heads of sales because we have a, you know, kind of nuanced process, I think, a sales process. So, yeah. Got it. Okay. So it's basically making sure they have everything they need to like kick things off. Mm-hmm. Yep. Cool. Um, how are you currently forecasting sales? Yep. Yep. So I, we kind of alluded a little bit around, you know, stage duration and things like that. But I, um, the part I usually play in um, forecasting is, you know, I bring, you know, the numbers and the analysis. So the top down approach, the, the win rates by AE, the win rates overall, and then, you know, more top of the funnel, like web traffic, lead conversion, things like that. Like, do we have enough, you know, web traffic to get to enough leads, you know, to support our second half pipeline. And so I go to the AEs and they kind of bring the bottoms up approach, right? So they are the ones who are giving the little bit more nuance around each individual opportunity that they are working on. Got it. So you're pulling out yep. info using Salesforce and Lexio. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And then is that like rolling up and then you're presenting it to like the head of sales? Yeah. So usually we'll do a presentation. Um, it's usually quarterly, uh, but yeah. Cool. And so, yeah, and it's like you who's like creating that presentation and presenting it. So I create most of the presentation. Um, I leave more of the context to the AEs and the heads of sales, but my job really is to make sure they have the data that they need um, to make the right decisions. Got it. So then you, you take the data and then we also get some context from the AEs and then you're mm-hmm. showing that to the head of sales and then he's been like, okay, that deal. Yeah. What are we, what are we doing on that deal? What are we doing with that? Yeah, exactly. Yep. Got it. Awesome. Um, and then on the metric side of things. Yeah. And I, I'm going to switch up the question slightly here. Um, mm-hmm. If you could only measure one sales metric for the rest of your life, mm-hmm. which would you choose? <laughs> this is a good one. I mean, so it, let's assume that I'm at narrative science forever. Um, if I, it, I'm going to say like one narrative science metric that I think is one that is supports a lot of other metrics. So that's kind of a, a little cop out, I guess. But um, the one metric that I love, it's called stories written. Um, and it's ba- basically, right, the number of stories rendered by our products. Um, so like a product value metric. And, you know, that has lasting impacts in terms of 
you know, how trials are going, right? How do I facilitate this trial conversation? How is net retention? Are these customers likely to retain? Well, yeah, they're using the product a lot. So I'm going to, you know, that's one that I think that I really like. Uh, yeah. Got it. So this is yeah. the, the product usage metric that you yes. think, yeah, cool. So this is more, sometimes I ask this question, I get like hardcore sales rate to metrics, but then sometimes yeah. I ask it and it's normally to the less like, if I speak to like a sales operations like LIFA, they've been doing it for eight years, mm-hmm. then it's like a hardcore, like something to do with the pipeline. But then yeah. when I ask people who are like not like diehard sales off. So I'm not saying that you're not, mm-hmm. but I get these more holistic ones, which is super interesting. So, so, you're, yeah. so, so that's a, a story of something someone would do in the product, right? Yes, exactly. And so what you're saying is that product usage is super valuable because the CF team can be like, are they going to churn? If someone's mm-hmm. on a trial, the A can be like, okay, they're using it. Yeah, exactly, right? Like it is, you know, I mean, that's what you're, we're selling value, right? Like how do we help companies? And that is the, you know, it's probably the most strongly correlated val- like metric that like leads to close wins. It, it leads to retentions and renewals and things like that. So, yeah. Nice. Um, can we talk about a time where you've been working with the reps and you've had to like get them to do something that maybe they didn't directly want to do, but then you've had to influence? Yes. So that was, that's pro- that was probably like my biggest struggle when I first like started in sales operations, right? Like I worked with you know, all these AEs, they have so much more experience than me. So it's like, how do, how am I to like come to them and be like, Hey, I really, I need you to get this stuff done. And so, you know, when I first started doing, I was so like process oriented, like, Hey, I need X, Y, and Z done at X, Y, and Z stage. And it just like, it never, it really didn't work. It was just like, I was like, what, why aren't they listening to me? And then, you know, I had a pretty good talk with um, Matt Bramson, who's our head of sales is that like, always start with the goal. What are you trying to achieve? You know, Hey, I'm trying to increase, you know, I'm trying to understand why leads are up or down. Can you please, you know, can we please start to, you know, fill in this type of information, things like that. So once we started to, you know, go goal forward, then, you know, they started to see, Oh, this is what we're trying to do here. And then, you know, also one of the big parts is, um, you know, like establishing a timeline for when we're going to review these changes. Right. So, few months out, we're going to look at this change, right? So we changed our, you know, stages, um, probably like a year ago. And so like every few months, we look and say, like, are these stages working right? Are the conversion rates, you know, making sense? You know, do we have to reevaluate our stage benchmarks, things like that? Yeah. Got it. So you, you, when you first joined, they were just ignoring you. Is that what you're saying? Oh, yeah. 100%. 100%. And like, uh, I, I mean, one of the things that also, this is a little bit of a tangent that really did help with this as well is I actually did a lot of sales engineering too for them. So I kind of did a double. So I was doing sales ops. So I was doing a lot of um, sales, but I was also going on sales calls and um, building POCs for the AEs. So it helped me in two ways. It helped me build a relationship with the AEs, but also helped me like understand their sales process and how they work. So it was really a really helpful time. So the, the, the sales engineering role, to be clear, is that's the thing that you do after someone's agreed to buy, and then you have to put the thing that the Well, so I'm, I did more pre-sales work, so trials, uh, enablement, and also like um, building of custom POCs and demos and stuff like that. So people would, you know, send us like demo or send us some like data, some blinded data, and I'd put together some dashboards and integrations with our, you know, extensions mm. and things like that. Yeah. But I bet that helped with like gaining their respect, right? They saw your skills. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, it was. It, it's just you know, you get you get to learn how they work, how how you respond to them. It's it's a process, right? It just takes a little time. Yeah, and so do you think you still have more to learn about interacting with salespeople, or do you think you must it oh. now? Oh no, I always. I feel like there's always something to learn, right? Um, I I'd love to like onboard a new salesperson, you know, an AE, something I haven't done because we've had you know a very stable team. You know, that's definitely going to be a new experience for me because it's really would test out the effectiveness of like my enablement docs, right? Like mm. how good are these docs, you know, to someone who's never seen like these things before. So, yeah. I mean, so we're either going to need some churn or, or some growth to test this out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> Maybe I should that join. pipeline. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> out. Yeah, exactly. I'll send you the docs tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, cool. So final question, who has been the one person who's uh, educated or inspired you the most uh, related to yeah. ops? Mm-hmm. Can I do two? Yeah. Is that cool or no? Is it all right? So yeah, yeah, um, one would be Zach Lois. He um, was the marketing and sales ops manager um, before me. He really taught me everything I know, 
And then um, Andy Karen, she is a consultant, a Marketo consultant who has um, tripled my skills and knowledge of Marketo and sales um, over the past year. Yeah. Cool. So Zach Lois, how, how, how am I spelling the surname? Uh, B-L-O-I-S. B-L-O-I. And, and is he still at Narrative Sciences or is he? No, he is at Jelly Vision currently. Cool. And so you came in under him and he like showed you the ropes? He definitely, yep. He showed me the ropes, yeah. Cool. And then Andy Karen, is that right? Mm-hmm. Uh, C-A-R-O-N. Yeah, Karen. And she is at Revenue Pulse, I believe. Cool. And she basically showed you everything about Marketo. Yeah, exactly. I uh, I recently, uh, over the last six months to a year, um, have taken over Marketo as the admin there. So it's kind of a, you know, I wanted to get more into RevOps, more ops stuff. So I was like, well, this is a um, next step. Let's do it. Let's learn it. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. Well, Brent, that was that was that was a fast, hard-hitting one. Um, mm-hmm. So I have a page of notes here. Let me quickly explain what I liked. The, yeah. the the I think the analytics of circle is probably something that I've kind of chatted about a lot with other people, but not in that framework. And I think it was super mm-hmm. interesting. Like, it, in order to do anything, you need to decide what to do, and you can decide what to do by looking at the data. Um, mm-hmm. The growing trend of analytics analytics and sales ops. I think that's probably a true prediction. Um, and then, yeah, your, your more holistic uh, metric that you chose, which is indicative, I think, of the, the more holistic role that you have, right? You're not just mm, yeah. sales off in like a thousand person company, right? And so you're more mm-hmm. involved in loads of different stuff. Yeah, exactly. Like it, I'm revenue offsets to everything. And like I, I like to span that to, you know, I mean, I started in a product role but as a business analyst. So like that's, you know, where the story's written kind of comes from. So, You know, I like to span the revenue operations to not just, you know, go to market teams. So I do a lot of work with, you know, engineering and product as well. Um, Yeah. Got it. Brent, thank you so much for your time. Yeah. Thank you.